Hi everybody, my name is Beth Eden. I'm the former National Youth Network Coordinator with the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Canada and currently volunteering with the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Youth Initiative as their Sustainability Communications Officer. So when we look at climate change and we put it into our search engine, this is what we see. Climate change is one of the hottest topics over the past three years. No pun intended. But if we look at these images closely, where are humans? We often feel a very big disconnect when we look at images like this because we see catastrophic events. I can see, for instance, tornadoes, ice caps melting, stranded polar bears. And I don't really know what I can do about changing that. So where are we? Where do humans come into this? Well, Sustainable Development Goal 13, Climate Action, aims to target action to combat climate change and its impacts. Humans and are the creators of climate change. Anthropogenic climate change is accelerating greenhouse gas emissions in our environment and creating detrimental effects that we will never be able to turn around in the next seven years. We have seven years to make an impact and reverse what is happening to our planet, for our people and for all of our ecosystems. So what's, uh, what's the SDG that I focus on mostly and the target in which I am progressing in my work? I progress SDG 13.3 in my personal work, and this is to improve education and the human capacity to act on climate change. That includes helping with education and knowledge building because we are all responsible for climate change and we should all know how to eradicate it. SDG 13 also links to all the other SDGs. Without acting on climate change, we exacerbate other issues with um, energy, gender inequalities, we're unable to use our resources in production. So it really is fundamental for our progress for sustainable development. SDG 13 has been progressed through the Paris Agreement, which was signed on by over 190 countries from around the world and the uh, European Union. But what is at the core of those agreements? It's communication. We know that we have to collectively act on climate change. And the way that we do that and we um, communicate that threat is by coming together as people. And we've seen this happen with youth mobilizing around the issue of climate change and warning others about this issue. And that's the incredible thing about the youth movement they know how to collectively come together. But what is it, what can we do to help to build the capacity and knowledge within young people so that they can bring science forward to those decision makers? We must be able to increase their capacities. But unfortunately, communicating data about climate change is never gonna get anyone to act. It starts with us. It starts with our values and communicating with one another. So during my work, um, I realized that youth are really at the heart of communicating online. And we're now in a digital age where civic engagement is all accelerated through social media posts, um, civic ownership of information and data, and youth are really at the heart of social media. Throughout my work um, with the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, I've been fascinated by the amount of data that has been coming out of institutions from around the world. I created a pilot project with a volunteer team to see how we could better communicate that science because Sustainable Development Solutions Network creates such incredible technological shifts and science, but I haven't seen it communicated to young people the people that need it the most and are at the heart of sustainable development. 
So our project aimed to understand how to better communicate and disseminate complex scientific research to close that science gap through mediums online to youth. I'd also like to take this moment to thank, uh, say a thank you to my team, Caitlin McClay and Isabel Torres for helping to develop this research with me. So we began our research by creating personas. The personas were broken into the different levels of interest and expertise in sustainable development among young people and their ability and willingness to act on an issue. We started with disseminating a survey online to over 120 youth. These personas were very much at the core of understanding what type of people are communicating about sustainable development online. So these are some of our results. Um, the top issue that young people care about is environmental issues. And we actually found that 64.8% of youth mentioned climate change was the top issue that they were interested in and were communicating online about. Now, if we look into more detail, we can look at the different types of personas being different levels of engagement and what those people like to communicate about. So for instance, here, person, persona A is the most engaged young individual and persona D is the least engaged in, individual. For instance, they don't volunteer or work or have never studied in sustainable development. But as you can see here, that type of persona, that category of young people care about economic issues the most. So maybe we're actually having to restructure our narrative and speak in terms of their language to get people to build that capacity about climate change. What can we do by talking about the financial aspects or the economic aspects of job creation related to climate change? And we looked further into what is it that, that people actually want to know. So when we present an issue online to young people, what are they specifically looking for? And we found here that environmental issues specifically, when people are looking at environmental issues, they want to know the solution to it. As I was saying previously, we're very, very disconnected. And so how is it that humans can even be a part of that solution? The top formats um, to communicate this data and this science to young people um, are on Facebook and YouTube in video format and also through short articles. And I found this actually very interesting because I didn't really think that young people would be going to Facebook and YouTube to be learning more about sustainable development, but they are and they want to know more about the data. What is it, what's an infographic that we can share that breaks down the issue and proposes a solution in one post? So how, uh, how often are people willing to act on a sustainable development issue? So as I'm talking about climate change here, we can look at um, people are most likely to want to act on climate change daily and that might be because they feel they're personally responsible or they feel like they're more willing to be able to to do something such as reducing their consumption in their daily lives and so we have to figure out how to communicate how people can interact with this issue on a daily basis again if we look back at those personas we can see here if we're targeting people that are not interested or have a lot of background knowledge about climate change or sustainable development, um, they're actually best to be approached through vis visual cues. So for instance, the average Joe off the street who doesn't necessarily know a lot about climate change might be best approached through something online, a social media post that grabs their attention. But being able to translate that to them, you have to be able to talk to them about what it is that impacts them directly and what the solution is to the problem. 
So with that, I'm going to share my top tips for communicating climate change to an audience online. And I like to always go back to a theory called community-based social marketing. A lot of our um, awareness online is, is very um, one-step orientated. It's all based on education, but there's not a lot about behavior change and solutions online. And the community-based social marketing theory talks about how we can use that communication on online realms to change behaviors. So here are some of my top tips that I have found throughout this research with social psychology theories. You need to know your audience. So when we're communi com communicating about climate change, some of the issues are that we're not scientists and the people that, that need to be educated about climate change don't know how to understand that data. It's complex, it's abstract, and it doesn't work. And the way that we can talk about issues with people is talking to the heart. So what is it that, for instance, persona D person, they might really, really care about their next paycheck. They may, they may really, really care and, you know, have no means to, to go above and beyond to act on climate change, but can change the way that they go to work. Um, so let's speak about what matters to them and what's in their abilities. For instance, they might also really care about their family. So how is it that climate change will impact their family and how can their family be a part of that solution? We've got to make communication actionable. And this is the issue that I've kept on seeing arising in our data. We've spoken to a lot of different scientists and educational professionals and communication is a two way thing. The issue is that we also often communicate and educate people, but we're not telling them about what to do. How many of us have looked at a news article and felt completely overwhelmed and don't know where to go next? Well, that's the issue. Where can we put in our communication how people can go away from learning about something online and do something in their daily lives? And maybe that can be even just voting. We've got to keep positive. If I go back to what we were talking about with climate change in a Google search engine at the start, you can see that all of our communications are very negative. We like showing the problem and we don't often talk about that solution. And sometimes when we don't talk about that solution, it comes off as very negative, but we're very, very um, interesting people. And we have so many amazing positive ideas and solutions to climate change. And we have to approach people in a positive way. We should also highlight the benefits of acting. So what am I gonna get out of it? Um, is there a way that I can save money by acting on climate change? And it's really, really important that we highlight this. And this is one of the key principles of community-based social marketing. And to go along with that, we must eliminate the barriers. So for instance, if it is too expensive to act on a certain issue, to buy a certain product, or there's in inaccessibility issues with um, being politically active, how can we eliminate those barriers for people and greater present the benefits for that behavior change? We also must be sharing credible information and now this is the one of the main issues as to why we started our research is that we found that there's a lot of civic ownership over information online and as we all know with many politics going over the past four years in the us and also in canada misinformation can breed civic un unrest so science really is that key to how we can better communicate with people and um, allows us to unlock those solutions and to communicating about what actually matters, that being climate change. And finally, um, we want to make it simple. We don't want this to be complicated for people. It's evident that climate change is our biggest threat to our society. And we have to make everybody aware and to be empowered to act. And to do that, we have to approach them in simple terms. So finally, this is one of the theories that um, I've been, been using over my research. 
um, and throughout my degree when I was studying at the University of Waterloo. And I highly recommend um, going to the website of Community-Based Social Marketing by Doug McKenzie Moore and getting some tips and tricks about how to better communicate about issues such as climate change. Thank you very much.